Hello hockey fans, and welcome back to another video. Leah Anderson's tenure with the New York Rangers left many fans of the team feeling frustrated and disappointed. After all, Anderson was picked 7th overall by the Rangers in the 2017 draft, and was once touted as a future captain of the organization. Yet after three seasons of underwhelming numbers and lackluster play, he was eventually traded to Los Angeles just last month. And that's not even mentioning the more controversial things that he's done in recent years. Given that he's now moved on from the organization that drafted him, and given his recent inability to live up to his once lofty expectations, it really makes you wonder, why didn't things work out for Anderson and the Rangers? Why did they trade a 22-year-old former top 10 draft pick just three years after selecting him? Well, thanks to an arguably rushed development, a number of setbacks both on and off the ice, as well as his fair share of personal struggles, there's more to this story than meets the eye. So in today's video, join me as we explore the turbulent beginnings of Leas Andersson. Let us begin during the autumn of 2016, when Swedish forward Leas Andersson was called up to HV71's Swedish Hockey League roster, having scored two goals in three games with their under-20 team to start the year. Though this wouldn't be the first time that Anderson suited up in the SHL, having spent 22 games in the league during the prior 15-16 season, the 18-year-old would have a much better showing the second time round, as he potted 9 goals and 19 points in 42 regular season games. He also scored 5 points in 16 playoff games, en route to helping HV71 win the Lamatt Trophy as SHL Playoff Champions, so it's safe to say Anderson had a pretty decent year in his native country's top league. Anderson's impressive performance during his first full season playing against men garnered quite a bit of interest from NHL teams for the upcoming 2017 draft. In fact, many scouts and draft analysts saw him as one of the top players available in his entire draft class, as Bob McKenzie placed him 13th overall in his pre-draft rankings, the Hockey News had him at 17th overall, while the NHL ranked him 3rd place on their central scouting list. This meant that Anderson was practically a shoe in to go somewhere in the mid to late first round. It just became a question of where and by whom. At least that's what everyone expected to happen. Several hours before the draft began, the New York Rangers announced that they had traded long-time top six forward Derek Stepan and backup netminder Antti Niemi to the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for defenseman Tony D'Angelo and the seventh overall pick in the draft. With that selection, the Rangers, who wouldn't pick again until 21st overall, knew exactly who they wanted, so they selected Leas Anderson seventh overall in the 2017 draft. Considering he was expected to go much later in the first round, and given that he was seen as a bit of a safe pick compared to some of the other players still available at the time, you might be wondering, why did the Rangers pick Anderson so high? Why didn't they use the pick on a player higher up in the rankings and hope that Anderson was still available at 21st overall? Well, New York were very keen to pick Anderson due to his impressive combination of high-end talent, hard-nosed work ethic, and leadership qualities and with them having to wait another 14 picks before they would return to the podium once again, they knew the likelihood of Anderson still being on the board was pretty slim. The Rangers clearly wanted Anderson on their team, so if they were going to draft him, they had to bite the bullet and take him 7th overall. Unfortunately for both Anderson and the Rangers though, this selection wouldn't turn out all too well for either party. Once the draft was over and the 17-18 NHL season was on the horizon, Anderson would join the Rangers for their preseason training camp, having signed his entry-level contract less than a month after the draft on July 13th. After spending the next two weeks training with the team, New York felt that the Swedish forward wasn't quite ready to handle the bigs just yet, so they cut him from their roster on September 28th and loaned him back to the SHL for the start of the season, this time in order to play for Frölunda HC. Having returned home and produced 7 goals and 14 points in just 22 games with his new side, Anderson was called up to join Sweden's roster for the 2018 World Junior Championships in Buffalo, and was given the C on his jersey as the captain of the team. However, Anderson's time at the event would be remembered for all the wrong reasons. As the tournament began, Anderson was focused solely on going for gold. Having won both a bronze and silver medal during the under-17 and under-18 tournaments, and with this potentially being the final time he would ever represent his country internationally, 
the 19-year-old was going to do everything he could to get his hands on the gold medal. Once the group stage was complete, Anderson had certainly held up his end of the bargain, having scored six points in four games as Sweden topped their group with an undefeated record, dropping just a single point thanks to an overtime win. Though he would struggle to put up similar numbers during the knockout stages, as he scored just a single goal in the next two games, Sweden had narrowly defeated Slovakia and taken down the United States in order to earn their place in the gold medal match against Team Canada. Unfortunately for Anderson, though, his dream of winning the gold medal wasn't meant to be, as the Swedish forward went scoreless in the final game of the tournament as Canada took the match 3-1 and handed Sweden yet another silver medal. So why was this tournament such an infamous one for Anderson? Well, as the final buzzer sounded and the Swedish side were given their silver medals, in his clearly very emotional state, the Swedish captain decided to take his medal from the officials, skate straight towards the boards, and toss it over the glass to a fan, before bawling his eyes out when the national anthems began to play. Though the IIHF made sure that the medal was returned to him, the 19-year-old made it clear to reporters that he wasn't happy to see it again. As you might expect, this unique response divided opinions from fans, with some claiming that what he did was childish and disrespectful, while others applauded his competitive spirit and his unwillingness to accept being second best. If you want to know more about each side of the argument, as well as my own views on the incident, I actually made a video on this event soon after it happened, so feel free to go and check it out and have a chuckle at how terrible my videos were three years ago. But anyway, having produced a point per game performance for his national team, alongside his improved numbers back home with Frölunda, the Rangers decided to bring Anderson back across the pond soon after the new year, as on January 19th, 2018, New York assigned Anderson to their AHL affiliate, the Hartford Wolfpack. After spending the next few months down in the minors, the Swedish forward received the greatest news of his career. He had been called up to the New York Rangers roster and would be making his NHL debut with the team. On March 26th, 2018, Leah Sanderson took to the ice in his first NHL game as the Rangers hosted the Washington Capitals. Not only would he score his first NHL goal on his first shot during his debut, the 19-year-old would end up spending the next seven games with the team, where he notched two points and was a plus one before being sent back down to Hartford to conclude the season. Despite finishing the year in the minors, Anderson's future as a hockey player was looking very bright. He had produced strong numbers back home and internationally, he had been able to translate his play to the North American system, and he had just gotten his first taste of the NHL, with plenty more expected on the way. However, the next few years of Anderson's career would be turbulent at best. The 18-19 season saw Anderson begin the year in the AHL with Hartford, having once again been unable to make New York's opening night roster out of training camp. After starting the year red hot by scoring 12 points in the first 14 games of the AHL season, the Swedish forward was recalled by the Rangers on November 5th. From there, Anderson would spend over half the season in New York and get his first real shot to earn a more permanent place on the Rangers roster, as he suited up in 42 regular season games with the team. Unfortunately though, the 20-year-old really struggled to make a positive impact on either side of the puck, as he notched just two goals and six points while registering a minus 13 in that span. Now in Anderson's defence, there were many nights where he didn't get much of an opportunity to make a difference, as he played less than 10 minutes of ice time in 16 of those 42 games. That said, he was also given over 12 minutes of ice time in 14 games too, but his play didn't warrant extra shifts in future contests, since he often made little noise on the stat sheet, he ended up with a negative plus minus more often than not, or he took several trips to the penalty box, so it goes both ways, you know. He may not have produced a Calder winning rookie season, but Anderson had still made some positive strides forward during his first real stint in the bigs. After all, he now had over 50 NHL games under his belt, and though he may have only scored 8 points in that span, he was still only 20 years old. It was only a matter of time before he started to find his footing in the league and became a leader for the team both on the scoreboard and in the locker room. However, his bright future with the Rangers quickly began to fade. As the 2019-20 NHL season began, Leah Sanderson would find out that third time was the charm, as he performed well enough during training camp to earn a place on the Rangers' opening night roster. 
As the arena announcer called his name and he skated out onto the ice during the Rangers' home opener, the Swedish forward tripped over a camera wire and tumbled to the ice, before getting back up and laughing the whole thing off. Unfortunately, this gaffe would be the highlight of Anderson's NHL season, as he would score just a single point and post a minus 8 in the first 17 games of the season before being sent back down to the AHL on November 17th. A month later on December 21st, TSN insider Darren Drager announced that Anderson had formally requested a trade from the team. While the Rangers assessed their options and figured out how to proceed, the 21-year-old spent the next 13 games of the season in Hartford, but after scoring just 4 points and posting a minus 9 in that span, the Swedish forward decided that enough was enough. Just before the new year in late December, Anderson was suspended by the Rangers without pay after he left Hartford's roster and returned home to Sweden. Now you're probably thinking that Anderson went back home in order to rejoin the SHL until a trade was finalised. However, initially this wasn't the case, as Anderson didn't suit up in another pro hockey game until a month after his return to Sweden on January 26th, when the Rangers announced that his suspension from the team had been lifted, and he had instead been loaned to SHL side HV71 for the remainder of the season. So having been chosen 7th overall just a few years ago, and having spent parts of 3 seasons in New York, where he scored a grand total of 9 points and posted a minus 20 in 66 NHL games, in the span of just a few weeks, Leas Anderson had been demoted to the AHL, formally requested a trade from the team, been suspended for leaving Hartford's roster, taken a month-long break from the sport before officially being loaned to the Swedish Hockey League. Talk about a roller coaster ride of a season, eh, folks? Given what we already know about Anderson's departure and the way in which these events unfolded, something doesn't add up. Why did Anderson take a month long hiatus once he was back home in Sweden? Why did he leave the Rangers organization right in the middle of the season and take such a long break from playing the sport? Well, according to those closest to him, Anderson wasn't quite right in himself when he arrived back home. In the weeks following his return, Anderson's friends and family could tell that something was amiss, both in the way that he was behaving, and in the fact that he wasn't usually the sort to just put his NHL career on hold and fly halfway across the world back home, when he was so close to achieving his dream. Also, several reporters who had known Anderson for many years, who interviewed him in the following weeks, claimed that they had never seen him so down and defeated. Speaking of those interviews, soon after his return to Sweden, Anderson began to open up about his time with the Rangers, shedding some light on his experiences with the team and detailing the reasons as to why things had ended up the way they did. In January of 2020, Anderson had told the Gothenburg Post that he was well aware that people would perceive him as a spoiled brat who had simply had a tantrum because he'd been sent down to the AHL but he stated that wasn't the case and that he was quote good to be back home again as he needed that as a human, implying his return to Sweden benefited his overall well-being as opposed to his hockey career. As for his suspension from the team, Anderson stated that there had been quote a few instances I can't really talk about, but he would neither confirm nor deny whether he had been the victim of bullying within the organisation, instead hesitating noticeably when asked and stating that he would reveal more when the time is right. In that same interview, Anderson also stated that he had been playing with an injury in both of his feet towards the end of his time in North America, to the point where it was hard for him to wear skates regularly, so part of his decision to return home was in order to see a specialist and rectify the problem sooner rather than later. After conducting this interview and rejoining HV71 towards the end of the month, Anderson would spend the rest of the year with the team and quickly rediscover his strong play from years past, as he scored 7 goals and 12 points in his final 15 games of the SHL season. However, more details on what Anderson had been going through would soon come to light. Three months after his initial interview in April of 2020, Forever Blue Shirts released an article detailing how Anderson's on-ice struggles and off-ice drama had been hugely impacted by the personal struggles he had faced since the season began. During his final stint in New York, the Swedish forward had become so focused on becoming a legitimate roster player and living up to the lofty expectations people had for him that he developed a real fear of failure. This led to Anderson losing all confidence in his abilities when he struggled to make an impact early in the year, 
to the point where he felt like he wasn't good enough anymore, and he wasn't even sure if he could keep playing hockey. These emotional battles led to Anderson adopting several bad habits which affected his overall mental and physical well-being. For example, Anderson would often stay up late playing video games until the early hours of the morning, and wait for his friends from Sweden to wake up seven hours ahead of his actual time and come online so he could chat to them, while other times he would resort to taking sleeping pills instead. This meant that Anderson wasn't looking after his body in the way that a professional athlete should, and he struggled to concentrate both during practice and in games. This lack of mental and physical care caused his on-ice play to decline and his performance to be far from the best of his abilities, which led to a reduction in his scoring numbers and his time on ice as the season progressed and the habits continued. By moving back home to Sweden, Anderson was hoping to break the cycle he had become entangled in and get both his career and his life back on track. Several months later, in September of 2020, Swedish news outlet Dagens Nyita conducted an interview with Andersson, in which he gave more details as to how these personal battles had affected him during his time across the pond. Andersson mentioned how his struggles had led him to do a lot of stupid things, such as smashing mirrors, destroying trash cans and breaking a bunch of hockey sticks, while also becoming more irritable and starting unnecessary arguments with opponents and even referees. Anderson also mentioned how he bottled up all of these emotions and felt like he couldn't talk to anyone about what he was going through, as he found it difficult to explain to others, a situation that was only amplified when he began suffering from the injuries in his feet and was even more isolated from other people. This downward spiral led Anderson to make several decisions that he later admitted were rash and impulsive, but made it clear that his return to Sweden wasn't because he wasn't willing to play in the AHL, in fact, he had felt much better in the AHL than when he was in the NHL. So to summarise, Anderson had become so scared of failure and was so frightened of not living up to expectations that his mental health suffered significantly during his most recent stint with the Rangers. Things had got so bad that Anderson couldn't open up to anyone around him, he wasn't taking care of himself physically or mentally, and he had adopted several bad habits that affected both his game and his day-to-day -day life. These habits would then only exacerbate the problems more, and cause him to spiral further and further out of control. So in an attempt to break the cycle and give himself a chance to heal, he left the Rangers organisation unannounced, and went back home to Sweden to be with his friends and family. Having read what he's gone through over the last year or so, whether you're an Anderson fan or not, you can't help but feel for the guy. I cannot imagine just how much pressure that every teenager or early 20 year old must feel when they finally achieve their dream and make it to the NHL, be it from their coaching staff, the teammates or their fan base. Add to that the fact that you are the 7th highest player taken in your draft class and it must feel like you have the weight of the world on your shoulders, especially when you're not playing well or not scoring enough. Some people may think that Anderson is just making excuses to cover his poor play and garner sympathy by painting himself as a victim here, but I think that's pretty unfair given everything he says he's gone through. I think this whole situation is a prime example of why it's important to remember that pro hockey players are human too. Sure, they may be living the dream and have a much easier or more privileged life than most, but that doesn't mean that they are immune to their own serious struggles. On a more positive note, once Sanderson was back home, he began to take the necessary steps to get both his career and his life back on track. The 21-year-old didn't even think about playing hockey for several weeks after arriving in Sweden, instead taking the time to recover from his nagging injuries and take care of his mental health. After he had healed significantly, and he had begun regularly practicing with a local hockey team, Anderson decided that he was finally ready to continue his pro career, and that is when he got the call from HV71 and was loaned by the Rangers for the rest of the year. Anderson also explained in interviews that he was given the option to rejoin the Rangers roster for the upcoming 2020 playoff qualifiers, but he came to the conclusion that, quote, what I need most of all is the continuity of hockey and everyday life and figured staying in Sweden would allow him to keep that continuity and rebuild his confidence before the following season got underway. As the NHL entered its 2020 off-season a few months later than usual, and with the 2021 SHL season about to begin, Anderson would once again take to the ice with HV71 and await the news that the Rangers had either recalled him or traded him to another team. Fortunately for Anderson, the news would be the latter, 
as on October 7th, 2020, the Rangers traded Anderson to the Los Angeles Kings during the 2020 NHL entry draft. And thus ended the Leas Anderson saga in New York. Upon receiving this news, Anderson felt a sense of relief and was excited to be getting a fresh start with a new organisation, while Rangers general manager Jeff Gorton was disappointed that things had turned out the way they did, as the team had expected far more from Anderson when they picked him 7th overall. That said, Gorton stated that Anderson was still a young guy who needed a fresh start, and even contemplated whether the team had disrupted his development by bringing him over to North America before he was truly ready to make an impact. Now if you ask me as a Rangers fan, I think both parties really needed this trade to take place in order for each side to thrive in the long run. I personally believe that Anderson never really got a fair shake with the Rangers, especially compared to other young guys like Philip Heatle and Brett Howden, who were consistently getting more ice time and the chance to refine their skills higher up the depth chart. Also, I think Anderson was unfairly overhyped and given lofty expectations by the fanbase due to his 7th overall selection. But what a lot of people failed to remember was that Anderson was never expected to be a first-line, point-per-game superstar player. He was always projected to be a gritty middle-six forward who played well on both sides of the puck and could rally the locker room together. That said, how is a forward in his early 20s supposed to develop and live up to his potential if he only plays 8 or 9 minutes every night? On the flip side though, Anderson never really made an impact for the Rangers when he was given extra minutes or more shifts on the ice, so it prompted the team to give other players in the organisation a chance to step up and take his spot on the roster, which they did. Given that Anderson has moved to a rebuilding team with plenty of roster spots up for grabs, and considering the Rangers no longer have a place on their roster for Anderson, having grabbed several highly touted youngsters like Capo Caco and Alexei Lafreniere, I think both the player and the organisation needed to go their separate ways in order for both sides to flourish to their full potential. But hey, that's just my two cents. So where do things go from here? Well at the time of this recording, Leas Anderson has scored 6 points in 8 games with HV71 so far this year, and is awaiting the start of the NHL season so he can finally move to California and join his new franchise a team in which his father is employed as a scout, and his best friend is a defensive prospect in the organisation. However, Anderson's time in the SHL this year hasn't been without controversy, as he was suspended for five games thanks to a hit to the head on October 2nd, and even had to sell his car in order to pay the fine. Although he did say that he intended to sell that car at some point anyway, so it's not as bad as it sounds, folks. With one year left on his entry-level contract, this season really is a prove-it year for Anderson, as a strong debut with the Kings could see him receive a more permanent position on the team and finally earn a full-time spot in the NHL moving forwards. Will that happen? I guess we'll have to wait and see, folks. As somebody that would love to see Anderson find his footing, given his recent struggles both on and off the ice, and given that I love a good underdog or redemption story, here's hoping that Anderson can make LA's roster once the 2021 season begins, he can play well enough to stick around for the foreseeable future, and he produces a long and successful hockey career, be it in North America or back home in Sweden. He's certainly been through a lot to get to this point, folks. And that was a look at the turbulent beginnings of Leas Anderson. What do you guys think about Anderson's career up until this point? Were you aware of his off-ice issues, or do you think there was failure on both sides of the coin? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, Tom from Finland, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.